In this video, I'm gonna give you the one meal a day food plan. Hi, I'm Dr. Zorowski from NewVisionExcel.com. If you are new to the channel, it is such a pleasure to have you here with us today. If you want to excel your health and your life, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification, and you're going to be well on your way. In this video, we're talking about the one meal a day food plan. You know, based on our comments and questions that we get here, I can see that a lot of people are really struggling with this. And in my other videos, I've covered one meal a day food options at like a 3,000 foot overview where I talk about percentages of fats and, and, and protein and carbs and that sort of thing. But a lot of people need a little bit more in depth information. So that's what we're going to cover today. Now, as you know, with one meal a day, instead of eating three meals a day, you're taking all three meals and you're just consuming one massive meal. And you're doing it in a one to two hour period. So when we look at that one meal a day, we have to really make it count. This is so important because, you know, I told you before that if you were following a one meal a day diet plan and you're eating whatever you want, it's a great way to drive nutritional deficits in the body. And when you look at one meal a day, technically it's not a diet, it's a strategy in which you're eating your meals. So technically you could really eat anything you wanted on one meal a day, but you know if you've watched my other videos that this is highly, highly not recommended by me because once again, it's gonna drive those nutritional deficiencies and so we want to focus on making this one meal a day count and we want to make sure that in that one meal a day we're getting a lot of different diversity in our food, we're getting a lot of different nutrient dense foods and so what we're going to do is go through the OMAD food pyramid that I made right here for you. Now in each category here, this is just kind of a starter right here. I couldn't write down every food. We'd have, we'd have foods coming off of this board right here. So I couldn't write down every single food but what it is is it's, it is going to give you the idea as to how to start and for further lists on this, go ahead and click on on the diet that we follow, it's the Heal Yourself Cookbook and Diet Guide. We follow that down, and I'll put the link below so that you can um, get more information. But let's start with the high fiber vegetables here. And this is where you're gonna eat the bulk of your meal, right here. Now what I did too is I listed the different high fiber vegetables in order of nutrient density because what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're focusing on getting the most nutrient dense foods in our one meal. Now first here is kale, second is spinach, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cucumber, and peppers, and then squash, okay? So an example of squash here is spaghetti, summer, and zucchini. And squash is actually gonna be listed twice, okay? Because it's gonna fall under the high fiber vegetables, and it's also gonna fall under the carb section. So there's two different types of squash there. So this is where we're gonna start the bulk of our meals right here, okay? Once again, this list continues on, however, you know, just for video purposes, you know, these are some really great nutritionally dense ones that you can really focus on getting into your diet so that you can get the most nutrient dense foods within that one meal a day. The next big one here is fats and oils, okay? This is really important. A lot of people who don't understand fats and oils are using a lot of hydrogenated oils which drive inflammation in the body and can cause you to uh, really develop inflammatory conditions. Inflammatory conditions are cancer, inflammatory conditions are uh, heart disease, all these different things that you wanna stay away from. So we wanna make sure that we're eating good quality fats and oils, okay? And examples of this, once again, nutrient density taken in mind here. Avocados, nuts, seeds, coconut oil, um, coconut chips are really great, uh, cheese, and then also good grass-fed butter. Now, we don't want to overconsume nuts and seeds because it can be a little burdensome for the gut, so we want to just kind of tread lightly in that area. However, they're a really great source of fats and oils, okay? And then with the nuts and seeds, we also wanna make sure that we're eating those in the raw form because when the nuts and seeds are roasted, what happens is gonna break down those oils and turn them into bad fats. So nuts and seeds, raw, of course, not consuming too many. Next one on our list is protein, okay? Now, when we think of protein, we wanna think of organic, we wanna think of um, grass-fed, we wanna think of uh, free range, that whole type of thing. And then beef, chicken, wild game, like bison, like venison, duck, those are all good meats. Fish in the way of salmon, mahi-mahi, and sardines, once again, really great. A lot of those have really great fats in them as well. And then, of course, eggs. Okay, once again, great protein, but also a great fat. 
then on our carb list, this one's important because a lot of people who get into carbs tend to gravitate towards white bread, gravitate towards spaghetti, rice, that kind of thing, okay? Those are not nutrient-dense carbohydrates. So once again, as we're trying to just up the scale here on nutrient density, we wanna focus on nutrient-dense carbohydrates, sweet potatoes, beans, peas, tomatoes, squash, and the, with those, within that squash, acorn, butternut, and winter squash. So these are some examples of really high quality carbohydrates, okay? Once again, we wanna stick in that nutrient dense area. And then last on our list here, smallest part of the pyramid, but yet still very important, and that's low glycemic fruits, okay? The reason we focus on low glycemic fruits here is because, as I told you before, if you're consuming a diet that's high in sugar when you're on the OMAD uh, eating strategy, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get that false sense of satiety, okay? Sugar can make you feel that you're full, and when you feel that you're full, but yet you aren't getting the proper nutrients, then your body's really starving on the inside. Side. So we don't want to eat a bunch of fruits that are really high in sugar or eat, eat any food that's high in sugar when you're doing the one meal a day because it can give you that sense that you're full. And then as a result of that, it can cause you to eat less calories and that whole thing can kind of spiral out of control for people who aren't really diligent about their food. So an example of low glycemic fruits is going to be berries. So we're thinking blueberries, strawberries, blackberries, you know, uh, all those different types of berries because they're loaded with antioxidants and they're also the most nutrient dense fruits. We also have Granny Smith apples, which are really good here, that are gonna be also low glycemic, and then grapefruit. So once again, you know, when we look at these fruits and we look at all these different categories here, they spill way beyond what I wrote here. I'm just trying to get you started. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about some different meal plans here, okay? As in, to what, what does this all look like? What are some good options, some good diverse meals that I would eat? You know, the great thing about one meal a day is you only have to focus on eating one highly nutritious meal. The first meal on our example list here is gonna be the Mexican feast. First, it starts off with chili, which is great. It's got a lot of protein in it. It's got a lot of good fats. When you top it with avocado, it also has some different carbs in it from the beans, and then it's gonna have a, a lot of uh, vegetables as well. The next one is chicken fajitas. This is really our main portion. Chicken fajitas over black beans with all the fixings, lettuce, guacamole, sour cream, raw cheese, topped with some salsa. This is, once again, a very diverse meal. And then and for dessert, what we can have is some chocolate coconut mousse topped with or with a side of really good mixed berries. And this is an excellent meal. Now remember, this is a big meal, but with one meal a day, it's supposed to be a big meal. Now jumping into our second meal, I'll go ahead and cover an example of a Italian feast. What this will include is starting off with a vegetable minestrone soup, a side salad with extra virgin olive oil and vinegar, and then grain-free biscuits with butter, spaghetti squash, sauce and meatballs. Then for dessert, what we'll have is mini cheesecakes with strawberry sauce. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and post a link below of those example meal plans so you can go ahead and get the recipes for them and make them yourself. They're all really great options and ones I personally like a lot. So make sure when you're doing the one meal a day, you're following this food plan here. It's all designed to support your body in a really powerful way. I mean, you need those fats in order to support proper nervous system function. You need that protein to make sure that you're not losing a whole bunch of muscle. You need to make sure you're hitting the right amount of calories so that you don't create huge nutritional deficits and huge caloric deficits that are crashing your metabolism. You need to make sure that you're hitting this right. So go ahead and follow this one meal a day food plan and be sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends because I know so many people are asking this same information. This is why this video came about. And then other than that, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or you want to share some of the recipes that you're using, post in the comments section below and I'll see you in the next video.